your plant can only express its full genetic potential if the minimum nutrient requirements are met. I amend my soil with an organic fertilizer mix right at the jump. All I have to do after that is water and keep the microbes alive. In this episode, we talk about using compost teas to enhance your organic soil's fertility. If you, if you don't, don't know, know, you have just tuned in to a Cali Green Grow series. If you're a first time grower, have never grown before, or just like watching grow videos, click subscribe, hit the notify bell, and grow along with me. Bacteria covers every inch of this earth. They're diverse and abundant. We don't even know how many different kinds there are. We're almost always finding these strange microbes living in extreme places. Microbes are the reason that anything decomposes. Without microbes, the earth would pile up with organic matter. Nothing would decompose. But that's not all they're good for. As microbes decompose organic matter, they convert it to plant usable nutrients. This is really important because plants cannot absorb organic matter. They can only absorb minerals. When growing organically, the goal is to replicate nature as close as possible. So how does nature feed the plants? I know for a fact that nature doesn't go down to the hydro store and buy bottled nutrients. Nah, that's not what she does. Nature recycles everything. The reason that I use aerated compost tea is to restore and increase the microbial life in the soil. Aerated compost tea not only adds microbes to the soil, but it also feeds the existing microbes. When growing organically, if the soil microbial life is happy and feeding, then your plant is also happy and feeding. This is because microbes decompose organic matter and convert it to plant usable nutrients. So let's talk about compost. Compost is organic matter that has been decomposed. And guess who decomposed it? Yup, microbes. Compost is rich in the nutrients of the material it's made from. It's also filled with fungi, earthworms, and small anthropods. But best of all, it's loaded with bacteria. Now, earthworm castings are the result of digestion of organic matter by worms. This is pretty much worm poop. Because the organic material has already been digested, it contains trace amounts of available nutrients. And it's also loaded with worm gut microbes. And they're great decomposers. Both compost and worm castings are an excellent source of microbes for your tea. And the goal is to increase the amount of microbial life already existing in these two materials. And that's pretty easy, because microbes will duplicate themselves pretty quickly as long as there's moisture and food. But before I explain how that works, I want to give a quick shout out to Vermaterra for sponsoring this episode. Vermaterra makes some of the best quality earthworm castings on the market. They also brew up their own worm castings tea and this will save you a little time. Please check out their website when you get a chance and don't forget to use my coupon code to get 10% off on any of their products. Simple sugar serves as an excellent bacterial food source. You can use molasses, honey, maple syrup, cane sugar. I prefer to use molasses because it dissolves pretty easily. A lot of my subscribers live outside the United States and they don't have access to molasses. But you know what though? Any type of simple sugar will work. One of my subscribers started juicing apples and he said it worked pretty good. Now seaweed extract and kelp meal are not only loaded with trace minerals and growth hormones, they also encourage the growth of microbes when you use it in compost teas. And certain types of microbes are also able to absorb amino acids as a food source. So let me show you how I make my compost teas. As always, I've left a list of materials and Amazon links in the description section of this video. So all you need is moisture, a source of microbes, oxygen, and a microbial food source. Let's start with a microbial source. I use compost, worm castings, or a mix of the two. Now both compost and worm castings can be made at home. It does take a little time and dedication, but the upside is, it's free. I usually use one or two cups of each per gallon of water. Another source of microbes can be captured from your own backyard. This is, of course, the easiest free option. All you have to do is find an area in your backyard where the soil is fertile and alive. Collect the soil and use it in place of compost and worm castings. What's great about indigenous microbes is that they're acclimated to your region, so the environment won't kill them. Okay, so now we have a source of microbes. RO water in a bucket provides the moisture. A simple air stone and pump provides the oxygen. All we have to do now is find a food source. I use molasses and seaweed extract as a food source. I typically use one tablespoon per gallon of water. Temperature affects the rate at which these microbes duplicate. The cooler it is, the less active they are. But if the temperatures are between 75 and 80, 
the tea should be ready to use a lot quicker. My tea usually brews 12 to 24 hours. Foam forming at the top of the brew is a sign that the proteins, amino acids, and carbohydrates have broken free. Which also probably means that the microbes that once lived in the compost and castings have also broken free. I imagine I'm floating around in the water, eating, duplicating, and just having a great time. The foam doesn't really have anything to do with quality though. It's really just caused by agitation from the bubbles. Aquarium enthusiasts know this as a protein skimmer. The same exact process is happening when you bubble your tea. I usually water this type of tea at full strength. This is a very basic tea, and I can use this in any stage of the plant's life. If I really wanted to, I can use it every watering, but I mostly just use it once a week. The main purpose of this type of tea is to increase and maintain the microbial activity in the soil. That's it. You can also make feeding teas. These type of teas are made from ingredients that have higher nutrient values, guanos, fish emulsion, and things like that. These type of teas are made by soaking the amendments, the microbial source, and the food source in aerated water, and then collecting what leaches out. The leachates contain minerals and microbes which are then watered into the soil. If you're part of my Patreon, then you receive the recipe card with a few of my compost tea recipes. Patreon is a way that you can support the channel and get a little something in return. But you know what though, all this information is free and all you really have to do is go back and check out my past videos for those recipes. Now the purpose of these type of teas is to get the minerals down into the root zone. There's also anaerobic teas. In these type of teas, the organic matter is allowed to ferment without air. I don't know enough to talk about them in depth and I really just started experimenting with them. A good source of information for this type of tea is JDAM Natural Farming. The book is written by Yang Sang Cho. I left the Amazon link in the description section of the video if you want to check that out. Now there's some really smart people out there, some of them professors in universities, and they argue that compost tea has less value than top dressed compost. They have references to published data, and they're also experts in their fields. The argument seems to be that the concentration of microbes are higher in the compost than they are in teas. They also argue that the cost of teas is way higher when used commercially. The counter argument is that full strength teas show good microbial activity. They also deliver microbes deep down into the soil, and top dressing with compost only really sits on top. They argue that the benefits of compost takes longer while compost tea is delivered deeper and shows benefits much quicker. I personally use both methods, top dress and compost tea. I feel like top dressing creates a top layer that slowly changes the structure of the soil, which is great. I also feel that plants seem to react faster with compost tea. I think that I can get the best of both worlds and don't have to choose one over the other. Look, this is my opinion and you don't have to take my word for it. Do your own research, experiment, Try things out, come up with your own ideas. Like I always say, there ain't no rules to this. If you want to learn more about the no compost tea side of the argument, look up Linda Chalker. She's a professor of horticulture at Washington State University. To find out more about compost teas, look up Jeff Lowenfels, and more specifically the book Teeming with Microbes. I left an Amazon link in the description section of this video. Elaine Ingham is a microbiologist and a great source for information on compost teas. I know this seems like a lot of work, and some of you guys don't have the space, time, or equipment needed like Bucket, Air Pump, and Airstone. There's plenty of companies that make ready-use microbial inoculants on the market though. There are even companies that make tea bags that are ready to be brewed. And you could always go the top dress compost route if you really wanted to. As always, I want to thank you for watching, commenting, and subscribing. If you haven't subscribed, please do. Don't forget to check out the links in the description section of this video. Follow me on Instagram. Check out my Patreon. And if you like this video, click like. Peace.